today for our last day of notes, what we're talking about are two-way tables. So first thing, we're going to throw a couple more vocab words out at you guys. First one is, so far, we have focused pretty much on just qualitative data. Which quali or, I'm sorry, quantitative data. Quantitative data means that it deals with numbers. I always remember because quantitative has the N in it deals with your numbers. So that's what we've been doing so far. You can then sit there and calculate your mean, median, mode, your standard deviation, be able to analyze your numbers from there. If you have two different kinds of numbers and you're trying to compare them, like your study hours and your score on the Regents exam, you can then take those numbers and try to see a cause and effect for it. The other kind of data that we're going to deal with today is what we call qualitative data. So with our qualitative data, that deals mostly with like qualities, things that you can kind of observe or opinions, different kinds of characteristics. So like a person's hair color, eye color, what is their favorite food, all of those would be qualitative data because you can't assign a number to it. Other words we can use for it, categorical data, again, means that there's not numbers. So your categorical data is your, the same as your qualitative data. Those are not in things that you can take a number down for. So data is then broken down into categories and groups and counts are recorded. So they generally have kind of two things that they're looking at. Like for example, in this table down here, we're looking at gender and then eye color. So those are two pieces of categorical data. I can't really attach a number to them because your eye color can't be six. Your eye color can only be blue, brown, and then the green hazel category. So as we have seen with numerical data, it is more interesting in order to be able to compare them and see how they relate to one another. So with category data, we can do that with two categories, and then you put your frequency counts in there. So that's what the tables are. So this is saying that six males have blue eyes. And then this is saying 20 males have brown eyes. But then if we look over here at the total, that's telling us 32 males total answered whatever survey it was that they were dealing with. So entries inside the body of the table where the initial accounts appear, that's what we call joint frequencies. Because if you think about it, it's joining two things together. So like this what six here is joining a male with blue eyes. It's joining those two things together to give you the count of six. Right here would be 16 females with brown eyes. So it's joining those two things together, your females and your brown eyes. So that's why they call them joint frequencies. And then on the outsides, those are your marginal frequencies. I always remember marginal frequencies because whenever you're writing a paper, doesn't your English teacher tell you to set your margins to one inch or whatever it is they're looking for? So I always remember the margins are on the outside. So marginal frequencies, those are on the outside. Well, just because you can type 104 words a minute doesn't mean you can come up with 104 words a minute to put in the paper. So what we can do is we can then take our frequencies and we can change them into percentages, just like we did here. So we turned all of these into a percentage. Since it's out of the grand total, see this was out of 64, 64, which was our grand total from up here. There were 64 people total in this survey. They call them relative frequencies. When it's out of the ground, grand total, they call that a relative frequency. When it's not out of the grand total, they call it a conditional frequency. Like if you're trying to find the percentage of males with blue eyes, that's conditional because it's not out of all 64 people, it's just out of the males in that group. So let's take a look at our examples on the back. I find it's easier when you actually have an example to answer. 
So we have a survey asked if you could have a new vehicle, would you want a sport utility vehicle or a sports car? The results of the survey have been summarized and placed into the two-way frequency table given below. Use the table to answer each of the following questions. So first thing, number one tells us to calculate all the row totals, column totals, and to find the grand total. So of the SUVs, if I add those up, one. well, it's 137 for SUVs. I was looking on the right side. I was adding on the yeah. right side. What is our total for sports cars? Eighty-four. So let's add up our males. So 2 plus 39. So 41 males. 35 plus 45. 180 for females. So 41 plus 180 gives us, so we just have to check, is 137 plus 84 also 221? Yes, it is. So as long as those all add up, your marginal frequencies all add up to be the same number, we're good to go. That is a very good question. So I would say that this study probably has some bias to it, since there's so many more females than there were males. So you would have to consider. They didn't tell us specifically, but maybe they took the survey at like the grocery store on like a Wednesday during the day, in which case you get usually stay-at-home moms who are at the grocery store at that point in time. Everybody else is working. So that's something you'd have to consider is when and where did the survey happen. Okay, question two. How many people responded to the survey? 221 people responded. That is our grand total. How many males responded? 41. How many people chose an SUV? 137. And then how many females chose a sports car? 45. You were looking at females who chose a sports car. So that would be our 45. So those ones are easy. When they just ask you how many, you just look at the table, you get that number off the table. Other questions they'll ask you involve a percentage. So they want to know what percentage of the survey takers was female round to the nearest hundredth if necessary. So because it says of the survey takers, that means this is going to be out of all 221 people that responded. And then the total number of females was 180. So we're going to do 180 divided by our 221. And then to make it a percentage, you have to do times 100. So 180 divided by 221 times 100 to the nearest hundredth. What would that give us? Eighty-one point four. What? No. That seven makes that four round up to a five. So it's eighty-one point four five percent. Yes, ma'am. Next one, what was the relative frequency of males choosing a sports car? So since it says of males, that means this time it's going to be out of 41 because there was only 41 males that responded to the survey. How many of those 41 chose a sports car? 39 of them did. So it's 39 divided by 41 and then times 100. Let's see what we get. Yes. 95.12. So eight, they want to know, was there a higher percentage of males or females out of all the surveyed choosing an SUV? Now this one, a lot of people just quickly look at the table and they say, well, there was more female, so it's got to be that one. 
But since it says specifically, was there a higher percentage, you actually have to calculate the percentage for males and for females, then you can make your statement as to what your answer is. So for the males, again, this is out of all those surveyed. So this is out of 221. How many of those 221 were males that chose an SUV? Two. Two. So two divided by 221 and then times 100. So we should get point 0.90, right? Yep. So now we'll do females. How many females chose an SUV? Out of the 221. So 135 divided by 221 times 100. Sixty-one point what? Point zero nine. So now we can state because we have mathematical proof, which one had the higher percentage? Female. Females. Yep. So nine, what percent of individuals taking the survey were females choosing a sports car? So again, because it says of individuals taking the survey, what is it going to be out of? 221. How many of those 221s were females picking a sports car? 45, very good. So 45 divided by 221 times 100. point thirty six percent and then our last one what percent of those who chose the SUV were males round to the nearest hundred so how many people chose SUVs 137 so this is out of 137 this time yeah two divided by 137 and then times 100.